Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Mario, also known as Soul Style Beauty. It's wedding season. I just recently came back from my cousin's wedding yesterday and it was bomb and I just love love. I was thinking about content for my channel and I was like, hmm, what should I film? I know it's wedding season. Jose and I also did plan on having our wedding and we were planning our wedding completely solo. So I was like, okay, it's wedding season. I have experience with this. Sometimes you may not have the money for a wedding planner. It's very, very expensive. Although our wedding didn't really happen because of COVID, here are some tips for solo wedding planning. So before we start this video, I definitely wanna speak more about the jewelry that I'm wearing, you guys. I'm totally getting into jewelry these days. I really love a nice necklace or earrings and sometimes some rings as well. But today I specifically wanna talk about the pieces from Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a sustainable and ethical jewelry company and their jewelry always makes a statement. So I have all these pieces today. So these pieces are great for a loved one, a friend, or even yourself. And the great thing about it is they ship all over the world. So don't forget to sign up to their newsletter because this will actually keep you in the know of new pieces. But I'm gonna show you the pieces that I got close up and personal. So I've been loving dainty jewelry pieces. I just think that they look so, so nice with like a silk blouse or like a nice slip dress. They're just so delicate and pretty. Definitely check out Ana Luisa for jewelry for your special occasion. All right, y'all, so instead of giving like the generic tips of like, yes, create a budget, yes, negotiate, I'm going to try to do something a little bit deeper. I do have a weddings do's and don'ts video that I will also link down below just in case some of you guys haven't seen it. My very first tip is as you do your venue shopping, make sure that your venue doesn't have a preferred vendor list. I say this because I assume that when you're solo wedding planning, you are on a budget. So basically a preferred vendors is only exclusive to that venue. So they don't want you to have any outside vendors. That includes the caterer, the DJ, any drinks or bartending services. And this can get really, really expensive, especially if you have a budget in mind. Definitely ask those questions about like the preferred vendors, just because that can save you money when you bring your, your vendors in from the outside to that venue. Do not fall in love with the venue and let you know this because you will be highly disappointed just like I was girl. My second tip will actually be to make sure you do a mental walk in my life day for your wedding schedule. So guys, sometimes when we think about a wedding schedule, we think about, okay, there's gonna be cocktail hour, and there's going to be the ceremony, and then there's going to be the reception, and all this other stuff, but we're forgetting like the little details. Like, are you having some people be escorted to their seats? That also counts. Are you counting in the photo time, and that transition period, and what your guests are gonna be doing versus the wedding party? Like, those details matter, so it helps to have like a meeting with your bride squad or maybe someone who's married already in order for you to have a realistic walkthrough in your mind so you can ensure that everything is covered when it comes down to your wedding schedule. It's a lot of parts to think about, I'm not gonna lie, so definitely have your vendors in mind, have your guests in mind, have your wedding party in mind and think about like detailed, specific, what are they doing the whole day as you create your wedding schedule because then it's going to be easy to talk to your vendors about the schedule and where you need them to be in order to make your day run as smooth as possible. Right, so my third tip would be to hire a day of coordinator. So instead of hiring a wedding planner that costs thousands of dollars, it will be great for you to hire someone to handle everything on the day of. So basically, they are in charge of keeping the flow of your wedding. They will communicate with your vendors, make sure everybody's where they need to be, and that takes the stress off of you. Because girl, even though it's your wedding, people would still call you about things that's going wrong, or like, you know, they're running late, and like, you really don't want that stress. Your wedding day is very, very stressful, and then on top of that, it's super duper long. So that in order to, number one, save money, and two, if you want someone to handle that stress, 
I definitely advise that you hire a day of coordinator. Work tip was something I saw at my cousin's wedding and I was like, oh my gosh, this is Jean. Yes, it's amazing. So basically at my wedding, I was not going to have kids that were, you know, from other people's family. The only kids that were coming basically was in the bridal squad. Um, so now thinking about it, most people don't want kids at their wedding because usually what happens they end up running around and they end up bored and you can't stop them because it's like what else do they do so one thing that I saw at my cousin's wedding is she handed out little like gift bags for the kids and it had coloring sheets it had like little games that they can play it had crayons so this was a way to really keep the kids busy so they're not running around being crazy during the wedding so I love this idea if you plan on having some kids at your wedding this will be a great idea to incorporate my last tip my fifth tip would be make sure you also handle your marriage license okay so in the midst of all the planning in the midst of the stress I think sometimes this is forgotten and if you don't have the marriage license on time I believe it's 72 hours before your ceremony or yeah 72 hours before your ceremony i'm telling you that can throw off your whole entire wedding so make sure you get that appointment early or probably like six months before your wedding definitely sit down to make an appointment to get your marriage license this is something that caused me additional stress to wedding planning and i'm telling you you do not want that and a lot of people forget about that step and they think it's super duper easy to get it in some states it is we ended up getting married in jersey and it was easier to get your marriage license there versus new york so don't forget about that i'm telling you do not forget okay so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video definitely don't forget to check out anna louisa and my code down below and i'll see you in my next video bye guys